Have you ever wondered why Tesla tires cost more, they wear out faster, and they sound quieter than regular tires? It's not just marketing. There are real specific differences that make these EV tires unique. And today I wanna to walk you through what sets them apart, what it means for your maintenance routine, and I wanna to demonstrate to you on this vehicle how to properly rotate the tires. If you guys are not familiar with EV tires, they're completely different than regular tires. They have an extra load rating in them. They carry a lot of weight due to the weight of the batteries and the electric motors and things that are in electric vehicles. So they need to be rated for a much higher level than an average tire, standard tire. In addition to that, EV tires, especially on a Tesla, have a foam lining on the interior. That foam lining is designed to help reduce road noise. Because Tesla doesn't have an engine, you don't ever hear any engine noise. They're very quiet on the interior. And if they don't put that foam lining in there, you're gonna get a lot of road noise transferring through the tires and into the car just because it's so quiet in there. So it's really important that you have that foam lining in there and that it's intact. You have the proper load rating on here. And I also wanted to mention on here that these tires are not run flat tires. So these tires, if you get a flat tire, you're gonna have a problem because there's no spare in here. They're not run flat. And I would certainly recommend to you that you buy some sort of an inflatable pump and some sort of liquid sealer you can put in there. I know Tesla makes a kit. It's a small pump and a pouch of liquid sealer that you can put inside the valve stem. That'll help get you back sealed up a little bit and hopefully inflated enough to get you down to the next service center or tire repair center, wherever you are. I believe they're about $110 on Tesla's website. So if you're driving this car, I know some of them don't come with that. I would recommend you pick one up, keep it in your trunk. It would be something that's important to have. I've done a couple other Tesla videos here, but and I mentioned that in here, but I want to talk also about tire repair kits. I think it's a good idea if you're driving a vehicle that has no spare tire in it, that you pick yourself up at least a plug kit, a plug a tire repair kit. I'll leave a link down in the comments below to some tools that you can buy easily off Amazon that you can use to plug your tire on the road if you happen to find a nail or something. Um, at least you can get that sealed up enough to get you into a safe area. Another thing I want to mention, every vehicle has specific lift points. We're going to put this car up in the air. You might be doing a service like this on the ground with jack stands. I've got a video out about how to properly jack your car and use jack stands. You might want to check that one out. We'll pop a card up for you. But I also wanted to mention on this vehicle, there are some rubber pads that you can buy that look like this. And these have O-rings on them. They plug up into the bottom of the car. And this is a great point to be lifting your car or putting it on jack stands. Uh, I recommend you get a set of these. I can also leave a link to these Amazon products down below if you wanna get a set for your Tesla. I think they're well worth having and they're not very expensive. This is the area where we're gonna be lifting the vehicle. We'll have one on each corner of the vehicle, behind the front wheels and front of the rear wheels. And we're gonna install that adapter right in that hole. It looks like this. We're gonna put it up in there and push it in until it clicks in place. Once we've got that in there, that gives us a nice lifting point for that where we're not gonna do any damage to the pad on there. And we're gonna be using an automotive lift. So we're gonna bring this in nice and close and that's gonna sit right on that pad. Before we get into rotating these tires, there are a couple of things that I wanna point out on these tires that make them unique to Tesla. So at the bottom here, there's gonna be a rating I'll show you that says T0, T meaning Tesla. These tires are made for Tesla. They do have the foam core like we talked about and they also have an extra load capacity rating. And that'll be up here on the top where it says extra load. So the reason for that is Teslas are very heavy. I think I mentioned this earlier, but in addition to the weight on these vehicles, there's a lot of torque generated by the electric motors on here. This happens to be the Model Y. It's a dual motor system. It is the high performance model in addition to that. So there's a, with these electric motors, there's a lot of torque generated by the electric motor, especially at low speed. With all that torque generated, if you're driving extremely aggressive, you're gonna be putting a lot of force into these tires between the pavement and the wheel. These tires need to have extra load capacity for the weight and for the torque that this car generates. Another thing you might notice if you don't have a dual motor car is that you might be wearing the rear tires much more rapidly than the front tires. So if you just got a rear wheel drive on your Tesla, uh, and those wheels are the ones doing all the driving, they might be putting a lot of extra stress on the rear tires. So it's important you rotate the tires if you can. You also need to look at your vehicle and see what your tire sizes are. Now this Model Y here has staggered tires. It means it's got wider tires in the rear than it does in the front. They're different sizes. So we can't just move the tires front to back. That's not gonna work. 
What Tesla recommends is you rotate your tires right to left. Now, another thing you need to know about these tires is they are uh, labeled with inside and outside. So your tires should say outside on the writing on here. And you wanna know that when you rotate these, we're just gonna flip them around to the other side. So they'll still be outside, even though we've rotated them right to left. Tesla recommends 6,250 miles on a rotation or 10,000 kilometers. If your Tesla that you're working on has these type of wheels on it with this center cap on here, they do have an access hole in the middle where you can insert a special tool. This particular vehicle didn't come with one, but Tesla says you can use an Allen wrench. I've connected a little set of uh, locking vice grip pliers on here to help me pull a little bit. And you can put that in the hole and then give it a tug. And then your center cap should come off. The next step is we'll get a 21 millimeter socket. We'll remove all the lug nuts. We'll take the tire off. We're gonna repeat the process here on the other three wheels to get all the wheels on the ground so we can inspect these brakes. Now that we've got all the wheels off, this is a fantastic time to inspect your brakes. Take a look at your brake discs and rotors. Take a look at your brake linings. Make sure they got plenty of thickness. In the rear, I wanna show you the floating calipers in the rear have caliper slides on them. There's a tendency for those slides to stick a bit it caused some problems in the brakes, some noises and things, because the brakes don't get a lot of use in here. You got to remember that these EVs, they have regenerative braking. When you let off the throttle, the car essentially slows down on its own. You don't barely need to use the brakes on these cars. So you're not, you're not getting anywhere of a typical car brake wear. A few times we've had some cars in the shop like this that are getting brake noise uh, because the brakes get such little use. So inspect yours, especially if you're in a, a salty or rusty climate, you might have to end up replacing some brakes on there just due to the fact that uh, they get rusted and they get noisy, but not necessarily because they wore out. So we're here at the rear of the vehicle. These are the rear disc brakes set up. We've got electronic parking calipers in here. And this is the one I wanted to show you that's a floating caliper. There's some slide pins in this caliper, top and bottom, and they don't get a whole lot of use on here. There's not a lot of movement back and forth. They are lubricated, those pins, and it's a tendency for them to get sticky and not float at all. There might be a time when you have to disassemble this, you know, lubricate these slide pins and put it back together just as a basic form of maintenance on a Tesla. We're not going to take care of it on this one. We're not having any issues right now, but it might be something you look for in the future. So in the middle of this rotation here, going left to right, but before I put the wheels back on, I thought it'd be a good idea to stack these tires side by side. I told you the rear tire is wider than the front tire. You can get a look at that here and see what the difference is. This is going to cause you a real problem if you try to go front to back on these. If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know I like to use a little dab of oil on the, on the threads just to drop here. It just helps lubricate the threads. If you live in an area where you've got a lot of rust and corrosion, this is something that will definitely help your lug nuts last a little bit longer, help save the threads here on your lug studs. Um, just makes the job go a little bit smoother. You have less chance of ruining your lug nuts over time. When you put these wheels on, you want to make sure they sit flat on the hub. We don't want to tighten them cockeyed at all. So I try to push them in flat on the hub and try to get one nut run down far enough where it's not going to it's not going to wobble itself off and get crooked on me. Once you've got that one kind of in place, you can put the rest on. I'll go ahead and run these in until they're snug, and then we're going to let this back on the ground and torque all the wheels down to factory specifications. You want to check your door placard and find out what the proper recommended tire pressure is from the manufacturer. This particular car says 42 PSI front and rear. We'll go ahead and set the tire pressures. This vehicle calls for 129 foot-pounds of torque on the wheel lug nuts. Now that we've got the tires touching the ground so they don't spin at all, we'll go ahead and torque these wheels to 129 foot-pounds.
And we'll double check them one more time. Make sure you're tightening them in a star pattern, of course. Go ahead and install our center caps. I figured while we got this car up in the air, I wanted to show you guys what this thing looks like underneath. It is completely covered from front to back. Take a walk with me. Now you look at all of these covers on here. It is one giant, flat, smooth surface all the way back. The only thing dangling down are these control arms, a couple of suspension bits. It's nice and smooth all the way to this rear spoiler, this rear lip on the back bumper. Pretty seamless. I believe that's for aerodynamics, for a little bit of efficiency here. Cut the drag down and uh, make this thing slip through the air a little bit better. I removed the cover under the front of this car because I want to be able to show you what this front electric motor looks like. Some of the high voltage wiring. I know I've done some videos on hybrids and I mentioned these orange color wires. Anything you see, these big fat wires and these orange sheathing means that's high voltage. You want to stay away from all that stuff. If you're working on your own Tesla, anytime you see these, just stay clear of them. Otherwise, you should be fine. The electric motor is here. There is an oil filter for the oil inside the motor itself. There's a little motor here and a special procedure to change that. If we get one in the shop here, that needs that service. I know it's not due for well over 100,000 miles, if at all, but if we get one in, I'll go ahead and make a video on how to service that. It's not terribly difficult, um, but it does require a couple of special techniques on there. I'm over here at the back of the car and I've removed the covers for you. I wanted to be able to get a look at the rear motor assembly. Looks a lot like the front motor. Same thing, it's got an oil filter on it and a pump and some fluid that needs to be serviced at some point, uh, probably in the very distant future. Over here, you can take a look at some more of the high voltage wiring. Up in here where it connects to the motor assembly and then travels down into the battery. The entire lower floor pan of this vehicle is the high voltage battery. So this battery is tremendous, the entire, entire middle section of this car. So I'm not gonna pull anything apart here on there. We don't wanna get into that, but I just wanted to give you a peek at what these motors look like and what the high voltage wiring looks like. Now that we've completed the rotation, we've got the wheels torqued up, went ahead and put all the caps back on, tire pressure's adjusted, everything is complete here on this rotation, this tire service. I just want to come into this instrument panel here, this iPad or tablet looking device, and we want to get into the settings here and reset the tire rotation. We want to get into these settings on here. We want to go into the service menu, this one here, and we'll select service. We want to go into the maintenance section down here, and then you've got a few choices here. We're in the tire rotation and you can see it's red. So what we wanna do is select tire rotation and then we're gonna go ahead and record this service. Okay, I and mean, it's gonna ask us to select tire season. Okay, we're all season. And then we're gonna do tire rotation. You have options here for a tire swap, a replacement or a replacement of a full set um, or one of, one of three, one to three tires instead of four, but we're gonna keep it on tire rotation. And then all we have to do is hit this reset button and we should be good, okay? And then we're gonna clear that out. And you can see here that our tire rotation now has been recorded. It tells us when the next maintenance is and then we've been set to green on there. And this particular car doesn't need wiper blades. I'm gonna go ahead and record a wiper blade service for them so this light goes off as well. And now you can see all his maintenance items are set to green. I'm sure if you've made it this far, you guys are enjoying our content here. I hope you've learned a little bit about your Tesla. Maybe you have some confidence to perform this maintenance service on your own. There's really not a terribly large list of things that need to be done on a Tesla as far as maintenance goes. They seem to be fairly maintenance free other than maybe tires and a couple of these small services. So this is stuff you can really pick up on your own. And I think I've mentioned this in some of my other Tesla videos that the uh, information system here right within Tesla's platform inside the interior of the vehicle is quite extensive. So there's lots of information available to you in there. Your owner's manual is in there. You can get online and see the service manuals on here. Tesla seems fairly open source as far as uh, service information is concerned on their vehicle. So you should take advantage of that if you're driving one of these and you want to perform your own services. Go ahead and dig in there and, and really learn what they've got to offer. Thanks for following along. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. It really helps our channel grow. It doesn't cost you anything, and, and it really helps us to create more content for you if we've got a nice following of people that are interested in our material. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Check this out right here.